The pyramid, as it stands today, there is, of course, the, the largest and most important of several groups of similar buildings scattered around through Egypt and other parts of North Africa. For all intent and purposes, we are told that at the year 820 A.D., the Caliph al-Mamun of Baghdad brought a large number of workmen to Egypt to explore the Great Pyramid. The reason he did this was because there was a legend to the effect that the pyramid had been built by mysterious uh, giants called the Shedai. But the mummies, he said, yes. He said, where are they? So they would have these labels and say that this was a five foot tall person. Now why would you make 10, 12, 15 foot coffin for a five foot person? It doesn't make any sense. Wow, that's true. That they had buried within the pyramid a great treasure and had guarded it with demons and monsters and all kinds of supernatural forces. Uh, Al-Mamun wanted to study this for himself, and he also was very anxious to get hold of that treasure, which was presumably somewhere within the pyramid. In order to gain his end, this son of the faithful brought with him workmen from Baghdad. These workmen were good Muslims and were also uh, honest and faithful servants of the caliph. But likewise, they had been induced to hope that were the treasure found, they would benefit also. In fact, they had been assured that such would be the case. I, uh, John asked me if, if we will enter the pyramid. We are not using the real entrance. We are using an entrance was made according to the story, because I suspect the story that it was made by the uh, Al Ma'mun Caliph. <laughs> the story said that Al Ma'mun was a man of science reasons. He was interested in what is inside the pyramid. And this is important. How did he know that there is something inside the pyramid? And that's why he became interested. He sent his workers to find a way getting inside. And from the first attempt, which is like, I don't believe it, that they found the way leading to the inner tunnel. Okay? I may believe or like try to imagine that this entrance was already there maybe from during the, the Greek time or even before and he re-excavated the place. And that's why his name was there because when we go there you'll find that no mistake happened. The first, the one who was like knocking the stones, he made his way perfectly to the right point. Like centimeters right now, left no, up no, down no. He was going in a perfect direction to meet that grand gallery uh, leading to the so rooms you inside think the pyramid. Greek like Roman, the uh, Greeks and Romans who come? I believe maybe ancient Egyptian, but late time. But there's no no, no documents. No, no, no documents. documents. No. Okay. Late period. Yes. No documents. No documents. But the uh, logic. He's saying yes. that Mahmoud didn't break in originally. Uh, yeah, yes. Mahri, you know, uh, yes. mentioned that there was an opening during the Greek Roman time. It exactly. was in the ground list, it's plus it's many burials underground. He, mean, the he mentioned yes. that the Romans knew a way not to be. Yes, yes, he didn't but say they made it, but right. he said they, they knew a way in. Yeah. 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 Did, did he find out about the legends of it from a thousand and one nights, the Arabian nights with the El Shaddai giants that yeah. built it? Uh, and there was great treasure there? The story says that when he went inside, he found nothing. And that is the case of all the pyramids of Egypt, almost nothing. In some little cases, they found a sarcophagus or a cover of sarcophagus, but there is no treasure, there is no mummies, there is no furniture, there is no jars, nothing, nothing, nothing. Empty pyramids, okay? And the little case I'm talking about can be had by any king at any time, okay? <laughs> A very interesting story about the material of the pyramid. Most of the pyramids of Egypt built by limestone, like this one, and there are granite stone inside. Some crazy idea in the last 15 years about molding the stone. This is artificial stone, which is why I call it crazy? Because it is against logic and against facts 
that this stone is quarried from two places, from two miles away here from the area, the cliff of Giza Plateau, and what we call it fine limestone, that lighter layer on the base, from the other side of the Nile, from Tora. Tora limestone? Yes. And Pure calcium carbonate. We tested the stone. The, the other stone, the interior stones are full of halides, full of other compounds. Yeah. So this, they, for some reason, they wanted the outer stone to be different. And they went eight miles away to the Mokotan Hills, which is near Cairo, and it's pure calcium carbonate. Do they keep the energy in? That it's layered. It have to be, you think have of to be electricians, proper. electrical engineers, think of Faraday cages. You've got stone shielding, shielding granite, limestone, just like metal covering to, to increase the energy. She's exactly right. So the different stone would create a different harmony with itself to, to increase the energy coming out. It's like shielding with stone. Granted, it's the inside. Especially that the Naimalite limestone it has very high amount of magnesium in it. Exactly. And the full calcium carbonate one. But the ones who said, like Muhammad was talking, that they thought that, they actually thought that casing stone is molded because they didn't find the Naimalite in it. They didn't find the fossils. It's like, where is the fossils? This must have been crushed and then molded. No. This is pure uh, calcium carbonate. Yeah, a stone from a different plant. So basically, the core of the pyramid is from the limestone of the bedrock itself, and the core inside the pyramid itself is also the mound. That's why they went to so many different places. They know exactly what they need. Exactly. Otherwise, they could just get whatever from wherever. Exactly. They had to have, to have the granite stone and the limestone, all in type of limestone. And one day, oh, in the early 9th century, the Caliph Val Mamun stood at the face and f uh, base of the Great Pyramid. It was one shining surface. All of the capping stones were in place. There was no mark or opening anywhere on any of the four sides. It was so perfectly covered that it reflected the sun like a mirror on all of the sides of the southeast and west, glistened and gleamed with the light of the sun, and only the north side was silent and dark. Mamun was completely overwhelmed by this structure, over 400 feet in height, a shining pyramid-shaped body rising from a square base with four equilateral triangular sides. He just stood and looked at it. But the important thing for us, I think, to remember is that at that time all of the surfacing stones were in, pr in place. The pyramid did not consist of a series of steps of blocks. Everything was smooth. Each level had been cased and surfaced with properly cut stones, so perfectly trued that it was not possible to insert a knife blade in the space between them. It is also believed that much of this work was done without any cement because the fittings of the stones were so perfect. Sometime between about the ninth century and now, all these casing stones have disappeared except six. There are six stones left that to remind us of what was originally the entire facing of the building. These stones are huge weigh hundreds, maybe thousands of pounds. And they are still in place, but that's all there is of them. All the rest have gone. Now we are told that they probably were used to build various structures in the city of Cairo. That they were used to uh, create palaces and mosques for the Muslims and that little by little the Great Pyramid was turned into a quarry. Blocks from above. So imagine that all this was all with these tiles like what we see there, and then people who quarry to take and they reuse, pulled it out from here, break it into smaller pieces to take it and reuse it. In building structures in the dynastic Egyptian times, in building uh, synagogues, churches, mos uh, mosques, houses, anything. Sometimes they also they can crush the fine type of limestone to uh, use it as a paint or as a plaster to the inner walls. Wow. And as I said, the oldest one, 
documented in the official books goes to the Middle Kingdom. And there is something else here that is, but let's look at how the stones are interlocking things. Don't go far. Yes,